How's it going guys? It is 2.49 a.m. June 4th, 2022 here in Japan and we have a medium difficulty question for pharmacology for step one and two. This is a challenging clip for me to make because we could spend 46 minutes talking about every fucking detail about all these agents here, but I'm going to stay consolidated. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 56-year-old woman, she has a blood pressure of 165 over 100, and she has renal insufficiency, creatinine of 2.3, normal range 0 0.7 to 1.2. Once you've hit a creatinine of 2, you've lost about 90% of your renal function. One year ago, she received a renal transplant. Prior to the surgery, she was normotensive. Questioners wants to know what's the most likely explanation for these findings. Okay, so we've got hypertension and renal insufficiency. Which agent caused it? I'll just whip through the answer choices here. Tacrolimus, wrong fucking answer. Okay, you need to know that this binds to a receptor known as FK506. It decreases intracellular calcineurin and decreases transcription of IL-2. This causes diabetes. Okay, that's your high yield point for tacrolimus. Wrong fucking answer. Sirolimus, wrong answer. This antagonizes a receptor known as mTOR. It does not decrease intracellular calcineurin in contrast to tacrolimus, and it decreases responsiveness to IL-2. It can cause dyslipidemia. Wrong fucking answer. Prednisone, wrong answer. This is a lengthy discussion, but you should obviously be aware prednisone can, can cause Cushing syndrome. That's not novel or dramatic, okay? Buffalo hump, uh, purple striae, okay, obesity, uh, osteoporosis, avascular necrosis of the femoral head. I mean, what am I going to do? Make a 14-minute discussion right now? Go talk about Cushing syndrome, but that's what prednisone is going to do. Wrong fucking answer. Actually, I can insert uh, one extra detail, which you need to know prednisone decreases T cell function. Okay, I've seen that on the step one exam. Uh, they just say patients on corticosteroids and they list a bunch of immune cells and they want T lymphocyte functions decreased because of prednisone. Morona, Moromanab CD3, wrong answer. This is an obscure drug that has zero yieldness for USMLE. Uh, there was one question on one of the old, old uh, NBME exams back in the day that uh, wanted you to know that this binds to the epsilon sub subunit of CD3. I'm not fucking joking, okay? It's on like one of the ancient NBME one through five forms, okay? Binds the epsilon subunit of CD3, which mattered, I guess, when you're trying to get a 280 on the, on, on the old numerical step one, and it can cause a hypersensitivity type reaction. Wrong fucking answer. Methotrexate, wrong answer, exceedingly high yield for USMLE, dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor. And this can cause pulmonary fibrosis, okay, important side effect of methotrexate, uh, hepatotoxicity, neutropenia, okay, with mucositis, mouth ulcers, uh, methotrexate, first line DMARD for rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lengthy discussion, of course, uh, but if you have to take home one point about methotrexate, its uses, I want you to know that its first line for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, DMARD, as I just fucking said, and also it can be used orally for plaque psoriasis that does not respond to topical agents. Okay, long discussion, wrong fucking answer. Cyclosporin is the correct answer. Okay, you need to know cyclosporin. This will bind to a receptor known as cyclophyllin and similar to tacrolimus, it decreases intracellular calcineurin. Okay, so we have cyclosporin tacrolimus decrease intracellular calcineurin. Cyrolimus does not decrease intracellular calcineurin and uh, it will decrease transcription slash responsiveness to IL-2. This causes hypertension, okay? It can also cause renal insufficiency. Now, tacrolimus and cyclosporin can, can both cause renal insufficiency, but I'm focusing on the high yield points. I told you before, tacrolimus can cause diabetes. Okay, well, cyclosporin and tacrolimus can, can both cause nephropathy, but USMLE, what they actually give a fuck about is that cyclosporin is the one that specifically causes the nephropathy. Hypertension, gingival hyperplasia, and it can cause hypertrichosis, increased hair growth, okay? So just general immunosuppressant. That's a very high yield drug for you, Simile. Whipping through the last answer choices, cyclophosphamide, wrong answer. This is an alkylating agent, binds to guanine N7. Okay, it's a guanine N7 alkylating agent. It causes hemorrhagic cystitis, okay, red urine, 
and you can mitigate toxicity with an agent known as mesna. Okay, it has um, thiol groups, SH groups, which I should also mention uh, the segue I forgot to mention before, but uh, methotrexate, you can give the leucovorin rescue. That's folinic acid, not folic acid, folinic acid. That's the rescue for methotrexate toxicity, but mesna is for cyclophosphamide. Wrong fucking answer. Azathioprine, wrong answer, okay? Extremely low yield drug. You could be peripherally aware that this is metabolized into an agent known as 6 percaptopurine okay, another drug, and that will go on to inhibit uh, PRPP amidotransferase for purine synthesis. Absolute nonsense, okay? Once again, we don't have a numerical step one anymore. Back in the day in the gunner culture, when we were all shooting for our 280 on the step one, okay, cool. But azathioprine, pretty much non-existent yieldness apart from you just knowing that it's a hard-hitting immunosuppressant, okay? Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.